When the Ashikma of Oyo, Shif Yesufu Amuda Olorun Shibi was murdered in cold blood on November 26, 1992, it was as if heavens would descend on the Asian town of Oyo. Women were screaming in the marketplace and children were running across the street. Elders were lamenting in their inner chambers. It was the most memorable day in the history of Oyo Kingdom. The circumstance of the death of Ashipa Olori Koshebi was most horrifying. His assailant allegedly waylaid him on a lonely path to his farm on the outskirts of Oyo Town. He was not shot dead, neither was he macheted with cutlasses. No, he was overpowered and um, they twisted his neck, poured acid into his mouth and forced the liquid down his throat. Then he was left to read in pain on the lonely path to his farm on the outskirts of Oyo. When the news finally filtered into town that Ashikpa Amuda Oloru Koshibi had been murdered, all hell was let loose. Women were screaming and across the nooks and crannies of Oyo town, accusing fingers were being pointed in the direction of the palace and principally at the footstep of Alafi of Oyo, the late Oba Lamidia Tonda Adeyemi. For many years, the family of Amuda Oloru Koshibi refused to bury the dead and they were bent on getting to the root of the death of Ashupa Olori Koshebi. Now, how did Alafi and Ashupa become enemies to the point that the mother of one was being put at the footstep of the other? What's the place of Chief M.K. Wabiola in the rift between Amanda Olori Koshebi and Alafi of Oyo? How did Alafi become a principal suspect in the mother of a chief? In his kingdom. The big question is who killed Chief Yesufu Amuda Oloro Shibi, the Ashikpa of Oyo? Now sit back and enjoy this intriguing story of murder, of supremacy battle, and of kinship tussle in the Asian town of Oyo. <laughs> Chief Yusuf Amuda Oloro Shibi was born to the family of Amusa Ojo Kwade and Oyani Kayoka. His father was from Midiakbe, while his mother was from Molito Quarters, also within Oyo Kingdom. The late father of Yusufu was also an aspiring chieftain of the Ashikpa title in Oyo, but he lost to Ashikpa Lalukun and he was forced to leave Oyo Kingdom. So he went on a self imposed exile in a shame. Yesufu later joined his father in a shame, where he learned the skill and rudiment of Ashoki weaving until his father died in 1934. So he joined his father's friend to travel around different parts of western Nigeria and he had to go to places like Oshobu, Ikukia, Ede, even all the way to Benin Republic and Togo to learn the rudiment of the trade. By the late 1940s, he had become a very big and influential exporter of weaving materials and he had expanded his businesses across western region. So he married his first wife, Ashiawu Ashadi Moyola, in 1946. He later married nine other wives, including Komfo, Amdalatu, Limota, and the rest of them. He worked briefly with the Western Region Textile, where he was demoted because he was unlettered. Now, Yusufu was unlettered, but actually appreciated Western education. So he played an important role in the establishment of his salary community grammar school as well as the Salerio Commercial High School, all in Oyo Town. By 1960s, he had become so prominent and influential and he had become a friend with all new Kwade Shijuade. Although he was not Obalamidi Adeyemi's favorite because he was the treasurer of the action group, when his father, Obadin Adeyemi, was dethroned by the Awolowo-led party in 1955. But because Amuda was so influential and he was the people's favorite, the Alafi had no choice. So, in 1976, Chief Amunda Oloro Koshibi was installed as the Ashikpa of Oyo. Ashikpa was very prominent and he had principles. He was respected and he was blunt and fearless. He was reported to have confronted the Alafi of Oyo over some unpopular decisions. He was so fearless and um, adversarial that in 1986, he was sentenced to one month in prison for contempt of court order 
because he had been previously ordered by the court to stop the questioning of Toba Lache, which means the king is supreme, an alleged private army reportedly honed by the Alafi to attack perceived opponent. He spent 12 days at the Agodi prison before he was released on June 18, 1986. So, as we can see, the late Ashik Mahmoudah Allah Roshibi was fearless and he was not on good terms with the Alafi, but he was part of the Oyomesi and the Oyomesi reigned supreme. So he was very influential, especially in the Saleyo quarters of Oyo town. How was Amuda eventually killed? And what's the place of MK Wabiola in the rift between Amuda Oloroshibi and the Alafi? <laughs> One of the earliest signs of disagreement between the Ashupa and Alafi was with regard to the confirmation of the title of Ari on Okankafo on the late Chief Moshud Kashmawo Lawali Abiola. The Ara is one of the most prestigious titles in Yoruba land, had been held by prominent warriors like uh, Basharog Mola, Oliole, and some other notable names in Yoruba mythology. So when the Alafi suggested that Kashima Wolawale Abiola would be conferred with the title. The holy of Yoruba land was agog, and people were looking forward to the day. January 14, 1988, was the date set for the conferment of the title on Chief MQ Abiola. When Alafi informed the Oyomesi that he was going to confer the title on Abiola, the Ashikba, Ever blunt and independent minded, expressed his disagreement with Alafi's choice. Ashokpa Amdala Roshibi insisted that he was not going to be part of the decision to confer the title on MK Wabiola. Now, after several consultations and um, appeal, Alafi was rest assured that Ashokpa had been convinced that a few days before the conferment, Ashokpa filed a motion. At the courts in Oyo. He filed a lawsuit against the installation of MK Wabiola as the area on can come for. Now, when the news filtered into the palace that Ashikba had filed a lawsuit, Alafi didn't believe, so he informed his lawyer, Chief Afebola, to confirm the case. Afe ran like thunderbolt to Oyo. And when he got to Oyo, he confirmed that Chief Amadala Roshibi had indeed filed. A suit against the decision of Yalafi just four days before the installation of the title, which was a Wednesday. Ashikba and um, the Alafi's lawyers met at the law court in New York. Chief Afebarela walked into the court too, and there was leg of brick bat. After several argument and counter argument, a verdict was given, and the court pronounced Alafi to have the capacity. To install MK Abiola as the area of the camp for Yoruba land. Now, before the court pronouncement, there had been so much preparation. Heads of state from different parts of the country had been invited. So, people were waiting with bitter breath on the verdict of the court. When the court finally gave its verdict, everybody rejoiced. And it was a victory, not for just for the Alafi or for MK Abiola, but for their supporters across Yoruba land. Although the Alafi came out victorious, that marked one of the most dangerous moments between the Alafi and the Ashikba. And the disagreement between the two eminent personalities was most visible at that moment. The tussle between Alafi and Ashikba Loroshebi degenerated after the installation of MQ Abiola as the area on the can come for. Of course, there is the part where the political leaning of both men reflected in the relationship. While the SDP, which Alafi was sympathetic to and which Abiola belonged to, controlled Oyo State, the people of Isale, Oyo quarters, where the Ashokpa hailed from, were mostly sympathetic to the NRC. So the politics was also reflective in the cultural choice of the people. The rift degenerated over, over time. And the Alafi and Ashupa became cat and mouse, nearly agreeing on nothing. 
and disagreeing almost all of the time. Up until the time Ashipa was killed at Ijawaya village along Oyogumosho road in the most gruesome manner in 1992. They broke his neck and poured acid into his mouth and made sure that liquid went down his throat before confirming him dead and leaving the scene. The family members of foul play and protested the mother saying that the palace was culpable. The alleged involvement of Alaf in the death of Ashikba Loro Shibi was because of the relationship between the Alafi and two individuals at the center of the murder, one Biodu Fasheito and Shegwadoe, who were said to be on the entourage of the traditional ruler in a trip to London shortly before the death of Amdala Roshabi. They were said to have purchased the vehicle which brought to Nigeria through Alafi's company. The vehicle was alleged to have been used by the assassins who killed Olaro Roshabi. Obadi Emi was alleged to have issued receipt to Biodu under the pretext that he had sold the car to Fashe Iton, whereas the car was with the monarch. The car was for a long period at the premises of the Austin High Court in Ibadan, as the court established that the car was used for the killing of Ashikbao Loro Shibi. The killing of Ashikbao Loro Shibi was so clinical that up until today, still remains a mystery. The journey to the killing was said to have been commenced in October 1991, when the trial of Alafi Biodun Fashe Iton and Shegwadoye traveled to London and came back with the vehicle. Shegwadoye was said to have had an international passport procured for him by Alafi in the name of one car the Adiemi. They were alleged to have used the name of the Kabiesi in the application for the visa for the UK just to ensure that he had access to the United Kingdom. In the course of the investigation, Fashe Iton was arraigned but because Alafi was not checked by the court. It was discharged. But he was not so lucky because the investigation carried out in 1995 and 1996 nailed him. During the search on his house, the police discovered a fake international passport with the name Kyle the Adiemi. He was subsequently queried, charged to the court, and convicted for conspiracy. During the trial, the police also said that Alafi was not checked. But because the monarch was not charged, there was no case for him to answer. All attempt by the state council to tender a statement that Alafi was involved was ruled out by the court because he was not checked. But the death of Oloron Shebi was a case that remained. In 2014, one Moji Dagbaji and he to Alafi was estranged with the monarch and he was said to have confessed that the Alafi was part of certain criminal activities that he was involved in. You know, yo. he did a video on YouTube and even swore to an affidavit. He alleged that the group Tobalashe, which he led, were involved in certain criminal activities which the Alafi was alleged to have known about. But in all of these cases, the Alafi denied culpability. In February 2006, the International Criminal Court in Hague began investigation into the alleged criminal activities filed against the Alafi by citizens of Isalaya. A motion was filed by Jacob Oluokwu and Suleiman Inshola on behalf of some people in Isalaya against the monarch. Despite all of that, little has been heard from all of the investigations till date. Until the death of Alafi earlier last month, the death of Amundal Loro should be remained a sword of Damoko around his neck. It is the basis for the animosity and uh, a threat the people especially in Esalio had for the late Alafi. Alafi was a king like no other. He was respected and loved in certain parts of Oyo as much as he was hated and revered in other parts especially in Esalio when the Ashukba hailed from. In 2010 the late Alawakala tried to steer the honest nest when he tried to install a sheaf in Agoja somewhere in Saleoyo, just in a bit to spy their laughing. After the death of Ashukpa, a new Ashukpa in the person of Alaji Shito Lubuju from Akensho Okompan was said to have been slated for confirmation of the title. On the 24th of December 2001, Lubuju took hill and gave up the ghost even before it was installed the Ashukpa. Since then, it had been a case of mystery with regards to the Ashukpa title in Oyo. Some indigenous of Isalaya have been appealing to the Alafi to appoint a new Ashikpa. The Alafi never did appoint any until his death 
last month. Ashikpa Amuda Oloro Shebi's death still remained a mystery. And in Isale Oyo, even after the death of Alafi, whom many of them accused to have known about his death, Ashikpa's death still remained unreserved. If you go to the street of Isale Oyo till tomorrow, the question on the leaves of the average person remains. Who killed Shif Amuda Oloro Shebi, the Ashikpa of your kingdom? We may never know. <laughs> now that's it for today. Please subscribe to the channel, like our videos, so that we can have historical content like this delivered to you. Thank you for subscribing and liking and clicking on the notification bell so that you can get notification when we drop new videos. Thank you very much. God bless you.